Welcome to Inside Lab Tech. Have you ever wondered how scientists explore and manipulate matter at the nanoscale? Two powerful techniques make this possible. Scanning electron microscopy, or SEM, and atomic force microscopy, or AFM. If you had to choose just one for nanotechnology research, would you go for the electron-powered precision of SEM or the atomic level finesse of AFM? Today, we settle the debate once and for all. Did you know that SEM can zoom in on individual bacteria, but AFM can actually measure the forces between them? Let's dive into the world of microscopy to explore their strengths, limitations, and surprising real-world applications. First, let's talk about scanning electron microscopy, or SEM. CM uses a focused beam of electrons to scan a sample surface. As these electrons interact with the atoms in the sample, they produce signals that are detected to form highly detailed images. SEM is ideal for studying surface morphology, especially in conductive materials and bulk samples. That's why it's widely used in fields like materials science and metallurgy. But its applications go far beyond that. From inspecting microchips and electronics to analyzing meteorite samples in planetary research, CM plays a crucial role in cutting-edge science. However, CM does have its limitations. Non-conductive samples must be coated with a thin conductive layer, and the vacuum environment can be restrictive. And there's another concern, beam damage to delicate samples. One solution, cryo -SIM. This technique freezes biological samples instead of coating them, preserving their original structure. And what about chemical composition analysis? For that, SEM is often paired with Energy Dispersive X-ray Spectroscopy, or EDX. EDX can identify elemental composition, making it invaluable in forensic investigations, like analyzing gunshot residue. Now, let's move on to Atomic Force Microscopy, or AFM. Unlike SEM, which uses electrons, AFM relies on a sharp probe attached to a cantilever that physically scans the sample surface. Imagine dragging a needle over a surface to feel every bump and dip. That's how AFM creates ultra-precise, high-resolution images. And it gets even better. AFM provides true 3D surface mapping and can image soft materials and biological samples in their natural state without needing a vacuum. It's also used to measure nanomechanical properties like elasticity and adhesion. But did you know AFM goes beyond imaging? In fields like single molecule force spectroscopy, it measures interactions at the molecular level. And in mechanobiology, it helps us understand how cells sense and respond to their environment. However, AFM does have some drawbacks. It's slower than CM, has a smaller scan area, and if the probe interacts too strongly with the sample, image artifacts can appear. Let's directly compare CM and AFM. Imagine you're working in a nanotechnology lab and you need to analyze a delicate polymer film. Which microscope should you choose? Let's break it down. First, resolution. SEM can capture details at the nanoscale, but its resolution is limited by how electrons interact with the sample. AFM, on the other hand, offers true atomic scale resolution, capable of imaging individual atoms on a surface. What about sample compatibility? CM works best for conductive materials. If your sample isn't conductive, it must be coated with a thin metallic layer, which might alter the sample's surface features. But AFM, it works on almost any sample, from rigid metals to soft biological tissues, without any coating required. Now, let's talk about how each technique interacts with the sample. SEM is a non-contact method. 
The electron beam scans the surface without touching it, which is great for preserving sample integrity, but it doesn't capture height variations well. AFM, in contrast, physically interacts with the surface using a probe tip, which means it can directly measure height, roughness, and even mechanical properties like stiffness and adhesion. What if you need true 3D imaging? CEM provides depth perception, but it's not a true 3D surface map. Instead, it relies on shadows and contrast to infer depth. AFM, however, directly maps the surface in three dimensions, creating high-accuracy 3D reconstructions at the nanometer scale. Need results fast? CM is much faster than AFM. It can scan large areas in seconds, making it perfect for high-throughput analysis. AFM, though incredibly detailed, is much slower since the probe must physically scan the surface point by point. Let's talk about working conditions. SEM requires a vacuum environment, which can be a major limitation for biological samples or materials that degrade in vacuum. But AFM? It can operate in air, liquid, or even specialized environments, making it a more flexible choice for sensitive samples. There are also some common misconceptions. Myth. AFM is only for soft materials. Reality, AFM can analyze even hard surfaces, measuring mechanical properties at the nanoscale. Myth, CM provides atomic resolution. Reality, while SEM offers high resolution, only AFM reaches true atomic precision. Let's summarize. For high-speed imaging, and detailed surface morphology, SEM is the better option. For atomic scale resolution, true 3D mapping, and biological samples, AFM is unbeatable. If you could only pick one, which would you choose? Comment SEM or AFM below, and let's see which technique dominates the nanoscale world. Both SEM and AFM are powerful microscopy techniques, each with unique advantages. Your choice depends on your research needs, your sample type, and the type of information you need. If you found this deep dive useful, just wait till we compare AFM and TEM in a future episode. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more cutting-edge science content.